uh, we're a little bit behind, but we'll we'll make up the time. Um, we're going to ask now our partner in this uh, tenth uh, annual Asia Pacific Economic Integration uh, Conference uh, that CSIS does with our friends at, at Jetro um, to now give uh, some uh, remarks and. Uh, set the scene for our panel discussions on developments in the Asia-Pacific economic integration process. Um, Chairman Ishige is a, uh, is a veteran of METI um, and uh, has been uh, leading uh, uh, JETRO since 2011. Before that, he was uh, the uh, Vice Minister uh, for International Affairs of the Ministry of uh, External Trade and Industry, METI, um, which he joined um, well, I won't say how long ago, but some time ago, uh, after getting a degree, a degree in economics at the University of Tokyo, um, his opening comments are always very helpful for us to frame um, the overall patterns in the region, and then we'll move to a panel discussion with experts from Japan, China, uh, Singapore, and the U.S. So, Chairman Ishike, thank you. Thank you very much for the uh, kind introduction. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to express uh, my sincere gratitude to all of you for joining us today. Let me also extend my deepest appreciation to ambassadors, U.S. government officials, and business leaders. And of course, I give my thanks to uh, uh, Dr. Hamri and Dr. Green, as well as their colleagues at the CSIS for their dedicated work. Uh, JETRO uh, has held this uh, annual seminar here in Washington, D.C. since uh, 2004, and today's seminar is the ninth in cooperation with the uh, CSIS. I would also like to take this opportunity to congratulate you for this beautiful new intelligent building, which opened last September. This is the first time for, for me to come here, so I say so. With that, I would like to uh, enter the main topic of this uh, seminar, economic integration within the Asia-Pacific region. This April, U.S. President Barack Obama visited Japan. Actually, I had the honor of speaking to him directly during the state dinner hosted by the emperor at his palace. I said to him, early June in Washington, D.C., JETRO and CSIS, the most influential think tank in the United States, will co-host a seminar on the Asia-Pacific economic integration. I will deliver a speech. Its content depends on the outcome of the TPP negotiations. He instantaneously pointed at Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and said, tell him, no, not me, tell him. <laughs> that, that's the, uh, our, our conversation. Of course, uh, he is responsible for the, this negotiation. Although the United States and Japan were not able to announce an agreement in principle on the uh, TPP negotiations during the present visit, I think that both sides crossed an important threshold. This may at the OECD Ministerial Council meeting, Prime Minister Abe delivered a keynote speech. He said, the, the topmost agenda item on my list of reforms is to accelerate negotiations on FTAs with our economic partners around the world. Among those, the most important FTA is, of course, the TPP. In Tokyo, President Obama and uh, Prime Minister Abe enjoyed dinner together at a sushi bar named Sukiyabashi Jiro. You can uh, see them in the picture here. That uh, old, uh, board the sushi chef is uh, Jiro-san. Uh, uh, have you ever been there? No, it's very expensive, I had. <laughs> I have never been there, by the way. <laughs> the uh, both leaders of the United States and Japan found the uh, roadmap toward the uh, conclusion of the uh, TPP and uh, built uh, a uh, sense of uh, mutual trust over sushi dinner. Both leaders uh, seem to be prepared to spend uh, their political capital towards concluding th these uh, difficult negotiations. This is what 
I would like to emphasize uh, before beginning. Today, I would like to uh, speak on four points. First, uh, first of all, uh, I will explain why mega FTA is important. While doing so, I will describe progress uh, toward their, their conclusions. Second, I will raise these important uh, challenges, uh, uh, three important challenges related to the TPP. Third, I will touch on our SEP. And finally, I would like to uh, describe how it all ties together in paving the road to FT, FTAP. First of all, uh, regarding mega FTAs, why are they important? Both Japan and the United States have uh, recognized the need to establish a new trade and investment system within the Asia-Pacific region that is free, open, transparent, and innovative. In other words, an economic integration area among our members with common basic values and rule of law. In the material arena, the WTO ministry meeting at Bali in Indonesia successfully pro produced an early harvest package last December. However, the agreement was uh, 13 years in the making and only constitute a part of the Do whole Doha package. This demonstrates just how critically important mega FTAs are for rule making on international trade and investment. Last May, I made a speech on the same subject here in CSIS. Since then, we have made, we, we have made substantial progress if I would compare the TPP negotiations to a horse race. We, would, we have turned the uh, fourth corner and ex ex entered the uh, final stretch. This is the most critical moment for finalizing the negotiations. All TPP partners except the United States and Japan have taken a wait and see policy after the ministerial meeting in Singapore this February. They had waited for the outcome of the bilateral negotiations between the two countries. At the end of April, as I said, President Obama visited Japan as a state guest and negotiations made substantial progress during this time. A very influential Japanese uh, newspaper reported that both government had agreed in principle. Actually, according to a joint statement by both parties, and I quote, we have identified a path forward on important bilateral TPP issues. We should now call upon all TPP partners to move as soon as possible to take the necessary steps to conclude the agreement, end of quote. This May, a trade minister's meeting was held in Singapore and chief negotiator's meeting in Hanoi based on the milestone progress in negotiations achieved in Tokyo, these following meetings have likely narrowed the gaps between the TV partners with regard to rulemaking on sensitive areas as well as market access issues. As the TPP negotiations move forward, attention is naturally shifted to the T Trade Promotion Authority as Congress described Although this is a purely domestic uh, procedure for the U.S., among Japanese Diet members, some ask whether the talks will be able to proceed without this authority. However, the Japanese government decided to start, decided to accelerate the negotiations based on the confidence that their U.S. counterpart would acquire the TPA in an appropriate time frame. I would like to ask you to discuss this subject in the following panel session. I believe that the TPP is a driving force for the other main FTAs, such as RCEP, the China-Japan-Korea FTA, Japan-EU FTA, and TTIP. The TPP matters not only for the, the value it has, but also the ripple effect it has on the other FTAs as well, in terms of international trade and investment rule making. This leads into my second topic uh, today, three points to be addressed uh, regarding the TPP. First, as I said, 
The conclusion of the negotiations on the TPP must be made expeditiously to accelerate other FTAs. Prime Minister Abe proposed a plan to conclude the Japan-EU FTA by the end of 2015. This was uh, favorably received by most uh, major EU members. RCEP is scheduled to be finalized by the end of 2015, and the TTIP should not be delayed much longer than the others. It's time for us to accelerate the negotiation process of the TPP so that most of the mega FTAs can be concluded by the end of 2015. Strike, strike while the iron is hot. My mother always uh, told me as a boy, uh, Hiroyuki, this is uh, my first name. Um, you are not quick, but uh, don't miss this opportunity when it comes. Never be hesitant. My mother, uh, not father, was uh, very uh, strict. And um, I, I followed uh, my mother's uh, the, uh, order always. Second, uh, although the TPP represents uh, 21st century trade and investment uh, rules, there is a very important but uh, missing agenda to be addressed quickly. What is this uh, new agenda? It is uh, unified uh, technical standards and regulations. In the TTIP, as well as the Japan-EU FTA, we are talking this uh, issue. We are seeking harmonization or unification of technical uh, standards and regulations among partner countries Considering what will be achieved through the uh, TTIP and Japan EU FTA, the TV partners should address this agenda so as to reduce the costs shouldered by private companies. If the technical standards and regulations were unified or harmonized, the benefit would be enormous. The performance of the uh, European Union in this area shows how huge the benefit is. In this regard, I would like to re-emphasize the early conclusion of the TPP negotiation so that we can tackle this agenda expeditiously. Third, that the, the US and Japan should uh, welcome the participation of China in the TPP. The TPP addresses uh, not only tariff elimination and reductions, but also rulemaking in fields such as SOEs intellectual property rights, and government procurement. These are all the issues faced by US and Japanese companies doing business in China. According to the party decision made last November, China has attached a decisive role to the market mechanism. Therefore, joining a regional economic integration, which is high standard, ambitious, and comprehensive, would be conducive to China's domestic reform. I sincerely hope that China will overcome its domestic hurdles and uh, participate in the TPP. In 2001, China acceded to the WTO. To this end, then Premier Zulongji conducted bold economic reform. For China, accession to the TPP would be uh, like a second accession to the WTO. China takes an open position toward the Trans-Pacific Partnership as long as the TPP is conducive to the development of global trade and fostering of an equitable and open trading environment. China is happy to see its conclusion. This is a message delivered by Premier Li Kikan in the opening ceremony of the Boa Forum for Asia this April. This statement is quite different from what we used to hear from Chinese authorities until then. Chinese leaders have rightly understood the necessity of domestic reform. The building and management of the Shanghai Pilot Free Trade Zone, as well as the launch of negotiations on respective investment treaties with the United States and the EU, show signs and actual pre preparation for joining the TPP in the very near future. I may be a little bit uh, too optimistic, but. However, I would, it 
it would be unrealistic for China to participate in the TPP at this moment. It is said, therefore, China attaches a great importance to RCEP. China intends to designate RCEP as a countermeasure to the TPP for the time being. And this brings me to my third topic today, RCEP. Until recently, RCEP was not considered as mega FTA in the United States, actually finally referred to four mega FTAs in the world. Thus, may a question came from a former USTR. What is the third? What is the fourth? For those involved in US trade policy, mega FTA means only the TPP and TTIP, which involve the United States. This year, the level of understanding about our CEP has improved. There is no such, uh, no, no longer such a question. I believe our CEP is one of two, one of two powerful drivers for leading to EPTAP. The major distinction of our CEP is that it has been promoted based on the actual needs of business in the region. Many companies in the region have begun to establish supply chains and sales networks to enjoy the geographically close and deeply integrated economy. I could say that the TPP will be the most powerful driving force for bar trade and investment liberalization in place of the WTO. But RCEP will be the regional comprehensive power within Asia. If these two main FTAs are playing different roles within the region, can we simply leave the ne negotiations on RCEP as they are? I do not think so. Two comments. First, if you look at the figure of FDI stock from Japan and the United States in the RCEP region, you'll find that the U.S. surpasses Japan, that the amount of FDI from the U.S. to the RCEP region is $447 billion. It is $319 billion from Japan. U.S. investment into the RCEP region is 1.4 times as large as that of Japan. This figure naturally invites you, American business people, government officials, and members of Congress uh, to look at RCEP more carefully. Second, JETRO has organized a dialogue between Japanese Chambers of Commerce in ASEAN countries and the Secretary General of ASEAN for more than five years. The purpose of this meeting is to request each member of ASEAN to improve its business environment. This dialogue provides a very good opportunity for Japanese companies as ASEAN citizens to have a direct exchange of views with the ASEAN Secretary General. The U.S. Chambers of Commerce probably also have mechanisms of dialogues with ASEAN countries. As ASEAN will sit in the driver's seat of ASEP, I sincerely hope that they will also call on the ASEAN Secretary General to improve the local business environment. U.S. business people should contribute new ideas into the creation of ASEP. I would like to take this opportunity to propose for the U.S. and Japan to work together with a view to achieving higher level of trade and investment liberalization within ASEP. I assume that trade in services would be a promising candidate to be jointly tackled. Finally, to wrap up uh, my remarks, I would like to describe the road to FTAP. As I said, ASEAN will sit in the driver's seat in RCEP. RCEP will gradually materialize liberalization of trade and investment, just as ASEAN has achieved until now. I'm sure that RCEP will eventually achieve the high level of liberalization within the region. Slow and steady wins the race. The proverb seems to have been invented for the sake of ASEAN and RCEP. The roles played by the uh, T TPP and RCEP are different. The TPP is intended to establish a high standard rules promoting global economic integration and RCEP to create a business friendly environment for the Asian supply chains and sales networks. Will they continue to coexist in this region by playing different roles? In answering this, 
I will share with you my views on the economic integration process within the Asia-Pacific region. First, the DPP will be concluded soon, maybe by the end of this year, thanks to the momentum created through the bilateral negotiations between the US and Japan. Second, the DPP needs to address new agendas, such as technical regulations and standards, as well as to expand the coverage of countries, so as for the DPP to become a truly global economic integration framework. This means the accession to the TPP of China, Korea, the Philippines, Thailand, Indonesia, and India. Two years ago, in this seminar, I raised this issue as a weakness of the TPP. Limited membership would be a dis disadvantage. I have to raise this again, so as for the TPP to become the real driving force for economic integration within the Asia-Pacific region. Third, in the meantime, RCEP will become a body to provide a truly business-friendly environment, particularly for competitive supply chains. The coexistence of the TPP and RCEP will continue until their integration into FTAP. I'm afraid that it could be quite a long time because of the difference in terms of rules and level of market access. Considering all the elements taking place in the future, political leaders both in the United States and Japan need to make a bold decision so as to conclude the bilateral negotiations on the TPP as quickly as possible. Yes, both uh, Mr. Murray and Mr. Froman can make a deal, find, can find a common ground they have already spent 60 hours on their talks. Each knows his counterpart's red line. It's time for them to sh show the uh, political art for compromise they have. Congressman said, there is no perfect TPP. No, no perfect WTO, I guess. Based on shared fundamental values, such as democracy, freedom, and rule of law, we should work together with a view to creating broad economic integration within the Asia-Pacific region as quick as possible. Lastly, today's theme is progress toward Asia-Pacific economic integration and role of the US and Japan. I would like to present my view on the role of the US and Japan. Currently, we are facing some challenges in terms of the TPP negotiations. But let us be reminded that the US and Japan enjoy a mutually beneficial economic relationship in a significantly broad aspect. In the US, Japan is a vital existence to the economy. There are more than 600,000 people employed by Japanese uh, companies. Both countries have high levels of technology and work together closely in many industries with deep mutual confidence. There are many, many examples. I, I cannot refer to those at this moment. But the point is to realize that the US and Japan should play a decisive role in leading the global economy. And with regard to the TPP, both countries should jointly take actions to strengthen the relationship of the Asia-Pacific region and set new global standard rules, such as those of intellectual property and competition. I strongly believe that both the United States should conclude TPP negotiations from an extensive strategic perspective. This is what I want to say at this moment. I uh, look forward to hearing comments on Asia-Pacific economic integration from the uh, expert in this panel after this. Thank you very much.